Hey you. Happy Tom Ford Tuesday. Now, always remember, it's always a good day to have a happy Tom Ford Tuesday, even when it's not Tuesday. <laughs> How are we? As you can clearly tell, I'm quite excited today for today's video because we've got two, wait, that's four, two new Tom Ford eye color quads. We have Dark Opulence, gorgeous. And then let's make sure I pronounce this correctly because I really like this color story. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. This color story. I feel like it wasn't that long ago that I shared with you guys that I really was hoping for pinks. And Tom Ford's been giving me, I feel like he heard my cry, <laughs> all the pinks. Any hoots. Today, we're going to get into all those details, you know, swatches. We'll create some looks. We'll try them out. And yes, I too thought of Last Dance when I saw that blue one. Mm -hmm. So we'll do some comparisons for sure. We'll go into the collection, into the little vault over there and see what we have that is comparable in the collection already from Tom Ford. And let's see. So with that said, I'm gonna crack open some water. Oh, that's the downside of these bottles. Okay, wait, I got it. <laughs> We're gonna hydrate and begin. I'm in rare form today. Shall we? Hello again. Hi, it's Tom Ford Tuesday. You know, the full face so far is Tom Ford. Everything we talk about today, including the two new eyeshadows, where they're available and such, all the products already applied will be listed and linked for you down below in the description box. So let's get into the details. Now, both of the eye color quad credits um, in these packaging, the traditional, I like to call this the traditional Tom Ford packaging. And they come with their little sleeves, which I always say, and I will forever always say, hang on to them, or at least hang on to one, so that you can store it for travel or just simply use it. Because let me show you, somewhat of a fingerprint magnet. You can use it like a little glove. Boom. She's clean again. You see that? No, it's the little things. So <laughs> your quads come with their sleeve, the Tom Ford traditional packaging. They do also come with their little applicators. Don't rag on these applicators. These will save you in a pinch. I've been there. <laughs> so you've got, you know, two of them, one with a brush. Both have the little sponge tip. Then this one's a little more detailed. These will come in handy if you need them. Promise. Believe me. I've been there. Those details are out of the way. Let's get into this beauty right here. We'll start off, we'll go in numerical order. We'll start off with number 43, Ambrosia. Okay, so again, I feel like this color story was necessary in the line and in this formulation. So as we can see, we have two shimmers and two mattes. Now, based on my swatches, I found, and I feel like this one of them is more of a topper than the other, but as we apply and use, we'll see if that stays and remains true. Because again, always remember, swatches only tell you half the story. We have to apply and use it and all the things. This is a tasteful, Tom Ford, sophisticated way to dabble into some color, and that will do. Of course, I'm going to try my best to create looks that are wearable, but yet we can also have a little fun if we'd like to. So this is Ambrosia. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> and then we have number 44, Dark Opulence. Oh. This makes me excited. Like I love pink, but there's just something about a gorgeous blue. Now here's the thing. I like that it's not just blue and blue. It's like turquoise with little shifts to it and then a nice rich blue this is beautiful this works and then they threw in a little bit of depth and drama but then you balance it out with this nudie flesh tone color here which is matte so I feel like this black dark tone is satin satin little bit of shifting shimmer shades so I'll do live swatches with you and then I'll share the swatches that I did outside in direct sunlight and then the swatches I did inside with natural light so you can 
really get to see my best to share as many details as possible so that you can really get an eye for the product and all the things so let's do the live swatches really quick we'll start off with this beauty since i've got it in hand okay and i will say to the touch they are softer but they're not like overly powdery so just little finger swatches right there yes very pretty and then i'll just swatch on the hand for you so pretty okay wait this black didn't really swatch the greatest but there you go fix it a little bit <laughs> dark opulence they're very creamy and one swipe pigmentation but again you know it's just a swatch. We'll see how it applies and all the things. Ambrosia, let's do a little swatch of her. There we go. I still kind of feel like this golden shade is giving more of like a topper with its intensity and the texture, but it's really nice. Like I like shades like this because you can just you dab a little on the lid for just like a little sparkle and you don't want to do the most but i f we'll see if we can build her up any i love the pink there she is there she is see definitely giving more like topper not overly intense but just enough yeah, let me go back into that shade and let's see if we can build it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I feel like if we had to, I feel like if we really tried, we could probably build that shade up a little. Just a little bit. All right, so life swatches are done. I'm going to give you a moment to enjoy natural lighting and outdoor direct sunlight swatches too. Let's start off with the pink shade here. This is a rougher number one brush. Nicely pigmented. I am going to lightly top that. And I'm just going to apply this all over the lid and blend. I want a soft, diffuse deposit. Because I want to do two extremes. Let's try something soft and pretty. Well, let me get a little closer too. Hi. Let's do soft and pretty, and then let's do something a little bit more through my teeth. Yes. All right, so we're blending nicely this time. And I'm not getting any patchiness, so that's good. I went back in and picked up just a bit more. I want to intensify the color just a little. So just blending that it's building nicely i'm gonna go back in one more time and just tap and just kind of fill in the gaps and then just blend the edges that's pretty this is what i'm looking for with a color like this don't have to be afraid of a color like this at all. I feel I have a little gap right there, so I'm just going to build in that area just a bit. And then let's blend the edges. We love a good one and done option. Yes, we do. Okay. This is a synthetic brush from Wayne Goss. It is the 27S. 
I'm gonna go into this shade here. Just build that up a bit. Okay, and I'm gonna apply This is giving a little bit <laughs> of sparkle. It's not much. So I'm going to pick up some more on my brush. Really going to kind of work it in a bit. It's picking up great on the brush. Right? You can see it's got that pink tone to it with a little bit of sparkle. But what I'm going to apply, it's not really doing too much. Hmm. So let's classify this as for sure a topper kind of shade, which is pretty, but you know, swatching it, it looks like one thing, but now applying it, it looks like another. We'll try it again on the other eye and see. But for this look, I don't want to go too overboard. So I think we'll stop there. There's no product on the brush. I'm just blending my edges. This little guy is a Wayne Goss number eight. It's a very small, detailed brush. I'm going to go into this darkest shade here, and I'm going to use this to create a very soft application on the upper brush line. I don't want to per se do like a heavy wing just because I want to keep this look very soft so I'm just keeping it very close to the lash line gave me a little smidge of fallout but that's okay we'll clean it up now I just have a little bit of product on the brush I want to create a very soft very soft wing just like that. There we go. I'm gonna dust away this little bit of fallout. Okay, good. That went away quite easily. I'm gonna do a couple coats of mascara and this soft and pretty look is done. Ignore that. Clearly, I don't know how to put on mascara. I dropped the whole entire wand on my face. <laughs> but I'll scrape it off once it dries. But here... But here is our first look. Very soft and pretty. Very easy wearing, but colorful and fun. And I mean... What did it take? Two minutes? We love that. Alright. Let's do another look, and this time we'll do a little bit more dramatic. Let's start off with this beauty here. Nicely pigmented, but we are going to tap off the excess. And I am still using that same rougher brush, the one I used to apply on the lid. This time we're just going to blend that directly in the crease. I went back in and picked up just a little bit more to build up on the outer eye. I'm just going to continue to blend and build, which it's doing quite nicely. Okay, I think that is the intensity that I will stop at about that. Chikahota GSN 10. Let's go into the darkest shade here. Ooh, that's nice too. Tapping that. I like to work in light layers so things don't get out of hand too quickly. <laughs> so, so you can always apply more versus having to blend and try to get rid of too much. So I'm just going to build up the outer eye with that shade. I'm going to keep looking forward so that I get the right shape in my eye. I'm 
gonna go back in and just get a little bit more tap and continue to build Isom W21 brush. Let's try this shade again and see how it applies. We're gonna use that on the lid. So I'm just all right. So let's see how this applies. So let's see. We get a different result. Mm. It's still kind of like a topper. Because if I sh when I swatch it, you can see the pink. But then when I put it on the lid, it just looks like little shimmers, right? Let's try it with the finger and see if it makes a difference. It's a little bit more intense, but I'm not getting that pink like you see here. I'll give you a quick swatch reminder. You see? You definitely see the pink. On the lid, it's not really giving me that. Interesting. Okay, that's okay. This is why we do this. We try it out, we see, and I get to share it with you. So I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm just gonna turn it around to the clean side and, and let's pick up this shade here. Um, yeah. <laughs> this one, I remember when I swatched it. This one's definitely more of a topper. You see, it doesn't have any color underneath versus this one that actually does. So, <laughs> but I will say that uh, finger application does give you a bit more intensity, but I'm still not getting that color that I was hoping for. Well, that is a little bit of a disappointment. I'm just gonna pat this all over the lid and then we'll perfect with the brush. Now, it's not bad, okay? It looks very pretty on the lid. It's very soft and sophisticated, but I just wish I was getting a little bit more of that pink underneath because I feel like it would blend really nicely with that other pink we already have applied. I am just going to, I'm going to try to mix both the sh shades up here together on the W21 brush and I'm going to apply that on the inner corner so we can get a little something on that inner eye. Okay. There we are. I don't love that. I don't love that. So here are our first two looks. This one's a little bit more. This one's more too, but not as much. <laughs> I would classify this as like a little soft and pretty kind of look. You know, this is easy, one and done. Put a little something on the inner corner and go. And then I do like that I have that little wing. The wing is just so soft and pretty, right? I like that. And then this one, it's a little bit more. Again, I'm a little mm, about the top two shades. I'm always okay with when Tom Ford puts in just a like a topper shade because that allows you to just tap on a little bit and have a little bit of sparkle that you can wear at any time. Day, midday, brunch, lunch, dinner, whatever the case may be. Um, but this one, I was hoping to get more of that pink and I really, I wasn't getting it when I was applying with the brush or the finger. But nonetheless, here are our first two looks. They're both quite pretty. It's water break time. <laughs> you guys are always making fun of me for having these huge waters, but it makes you drink all the water you need. And this time I'm actually having sparkling water. Dark opulence, let's give her a go. Of course, let's try to create something soft and pretty and easy for um, every day ish, as much as blue can be every day. And then we'll do something nice and dramatic. So I'm going to go in with what is this? This is the Sonia G Blender Pro brush. And I'm going to go into this like flesh tone, very light 
shade that is nice and pigmented. I am going to blend this shade all over. Let me get nice and close. Hi! I'm just blending this shade all over. And using a brush like this allows it to be nice and diffused, you know. And then continue to build that shade just on the lid. And then whatever's left, we're just bringing it up. So, you know, soft little, little bit of a little bit. Now, of the two shades, this one, it's more blue, like the classic blue. And then this one is a little bit more of like a turquoise. I'm going to go in with that same uh, Blender Pro from Sony G. Just pack that on the brush. I'm going to just tap. And we're going to start on the outer eye very lightly. Going back in and picking up a little bit more tapping. And just a little lightly building it up on my outer eye. And then starting to kind of shape the eye, but keeping it on the outer portion. I have not gone back in and gotten any more. I'm just taking whatever is left on the brush, just keeping it focused on the outer eye. And just building and blending pretty much. I actually just picked up a clean blender brush. This one in particular is number 16 from Wayne Goss. And I'm just gonna blend these edges. And I'm purposely holding the brush all the way towards the end because I don't want a lot of pressure. I want this nice and soft and diffused. I'm going to go back in with the first brush we used, pick up the lightest shade, and reapply that lid. I think that's quite pretty soft. Kind of unexpected when you're looking at this palette's color story. But we love that. I'm gonna go back in with that tiny little brush. It's a number eight from Wayne Goss. And let's go into the blue shade, the same shade that we've blended. I'm actually gonna go into it and apply it like a little wing and it'll be just a little bit more intense. And why not? <laughs> Let's go into the black shade and kind of add a little bit more to this wing. There we go. Kind of intensifies what we have already applied just a little bit. I like this look. It's quite unexpected when you first look at this color story, right? You're not expecting to get something soft and actually wearable. But we did. <laughs> I think a lot of times when it comes to bolder, more intense colors, it's all about your techniques, your brushes and things like that. Whereas you can create something that you'll be a little bit more comfortable with if you don't want to, if you're not in the mood for something so bold, but yet still wearable and fun. Because this is fun, but it's more toned down and it's a lot more wearable. So, okay, I'm happy about this first look. Now let's get dramatic. Yes, let's get intense. And let's create another look. Let's start off with the darkest shade here. I'm going to build that up on the outer eye. And again, we're going to start with less and build up. Makes things a lot easier. Promise. <laughs> so I just went back in for a little bit more. I'm going to continue to build that up. I want it dramatic, but I don't want it to be too crazy either, especially as dark as this shade is. I'm 
this is blending really, really nicely. Okay. Whereas you can get a smoky look, but it's not a dark shade that you can't control. You know what I mean? It's not too, too, too much. Clean brush. Again, that's number 16. No product, which is blending and diffusing the edges, making it nice and perfected. Okay, so let's go into this shade here. I am picking this up on my W21 brush. Pop the excess and let's start to apply. I'm just patting. And then we'll swipe. That was pretty. I'm gonna go back into my blender brush, which was the uh, uh, Chicota GSM 10, and just blend these edges a bit. I'm gonna clean it off in between. And just blend, blend, blend. You can totally go in with your eye definer pen and create a nice wing with this look, but I want to just use the palette. So I'm going to go in with the black shade and create a wing. I have to say for this palette, I feel like both looks are just so different you wouldn't even think it came from this one pout but we like that shows the versatility i always say with these quads don't think you're stuck with one look there is versatility in just four colors and the dark opulence did not disappoint so here we are all right let's do some quick comparisons and then we need to talk. <laughs> Last dance. This was the eyeshadow palette I thought of immediately when I saw uh, Dark Opulence. Obviously, they're not the same <laughs> because the color story on um, Last Dance. This is a gorgeous color story, by the way. Um, it's that beautiful blue and then this light shade. It's really just those two that I think are worth comparing. So let's swatch those side by side. Okay, yes, this is an older palette. Yes, I still use it. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's available anymore, but I'm glad that I have it in my collection because it gets a lot of love and use. And then I will just swatch the blues and this lightest shade. For um, I mean, I'm just going to say it for a much older palette. Like I would like to consider her like a true classic. This is some pigmented, beautiful stuff. Now, this tone, it's definitely more beigey than this one. It's got a little bit of more of a pink undertone. And then of the two blues in comparison to Last Dance, I want to say this one is a bit more comparable. You can see this is just a little bit more pink compared to this one. And these two are actually quite similar. I do want to say, like, right there, you can see this is a lot more of a lighter blue in comparison to this one. Yeah, it's a little bit more turquoise. And then this one is like a true blue. Okay, so that was Last Dance. And then because I don't really feel like Tom Ford has a lot of color stories like this. Okay, so I pulled Electric Cherry and just because I really don't have pink pinks like that. From Tom Ford. I'm gonna just kind of swatch this one. And this is not even pink, it's like cherry. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. That's that shade from Lost Cherry, and then I'll swatch this, which is like a true fuchsia pink. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know, I was like pulling straws. I just wanted to have something to compare it to in the collection. So those are quick comparisons. When I'm wrong about something, I have no problem telling you. I love that I was able to share both the good and the bad with my experience with the palettes. And it was my mistake going into these thinking that this was the creme formulation. Where did I see that it was creme formulation? Hold on, let me confirm. On the Nordstrom website, it states, I color quad creme. But then on the box, okay, and this is my mistake for not seeing it sooner, it says, I color quad. It does not say creme. I color quad creme. And I color quad. Totally different formulas. My mistake was going into these palettes thinking it was the creme formulation which is an amazing formulation. That does not change. But that was my mistake because, I mean, when I first watched them and used them, I knew right away. I was like, no, there's no crime here. This is like the traditional formula, okay? Which is great as well. But that was my mistake. And I just want to clarify that these are not crime. Nordstrom made a mistake. <laughs> and I went along with it knowing better but I'm glad everything worked out the way that it did and I came back and I gave these palettes another try because I'm actually very impressed with the looks I was able to create. I will say of the two I'm kind of favoring Dark Opulence more. I feel like working with it I'm going to be able to work with all four shades happily. This one, the issue I have is these two top shades, they're both giving me a topper vibe. Where, you know, they're beautiful, like they're fun, they're nice, but you saw that when I swatched this one, there's a pink base and then there's glitters versus, and then this one is just your traditional topper shade, which we're all probably used to by now in a Tom Ford quad. These two are great. Pigment said, you know, all the things are great colors, they're wearable colors, they're fun, and all their things, they're pretty. But the fact that I have two toppers that ultimately kind of look the same, I don't know. If you use your finger with this one, you can build it up a bit and it looks like a little bit more than the than this one. Yes, but for the price, I don't feel like you need to go through all of that, in all honesty. Keep that in mind if you're interested in this color story and this one in particular. Like even right now, just looking at the two looks I was able to create with Dark Opulence, I feel like I'm having more versatility. But I mean, I can't get over this pinky tone. That's a beautiful one and done. <laughs> it is. It's so gorgeous. So I mean, they're both really pretty, but again, I'm saying the same thing over and over. You get it. <laughs> I like the blue one a little bit more, but let me know what you guys think. I'm always happy to hear and discuss with you. So comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Happy Tom Ford Tuesday, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Please don't forget to give today's video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Stay beautiful, guys. I'll see you soon.